right. All right, Chris, we have Coach Neiman here. All right, good afternoon, Coach. Can you hear me okay? I can. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. The, uh, thanks for your time. The, the floor is yours. I'll let you open up with a couple couple statements, and then I'll throw it out to some questions. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if I've been introduced, just to be sure everybody knows. I'm Jay Neiman, Assistant D-Line Coach and Defensive Recruiting Coordinator. I appreciate everybody making a couple minutes this afternoon to spend some time with us. Um, it's, it's been a great start to spring practice here. As most of you know, or all of you probably know, we didn't get this opportunity a year ago. So uh, to be able to get out there on the field and do what we love to do with these guys has is, is, uh, been great. Um, many of us, and I include myself in that process, uh, weren't in spring practice uh, ever at the University of Iowa. I know I've been through two seasons, but because of the pandemic last spring, I wasn't in spring practice. And a number of our uh, young players in the program have never been through a spring ball either. So it's great to get out on the field and have a chance to work and um, to bring these guys along. We've got, a, I think, a, a great group of young guys to work with in the D-line, uh, some guys that are young, complemented with a few that have some veteran uh, leadership and experience. But it's a great group of guys that come to work um, every day with a positive attitude and take the field with good energy. Uh, they're making progress, working hard, and uh, excited about what this group can do here as we um, approach the midway point of spring ball. Uh, practice number eight is coming up tomorrow. And uh, if we can kind of finish it off uh, with seven good ones or eight more good ones, uh, hopefully we'll be in a place that we're comfortable with um, and happy after the 15 are over with on May 1st. Um, a lot of these guys, as you may know, were red shirts a year ago. So uh, most of them, we maybe got two or three periods of fundamental work at the beginning of practice, and then they were off to the other end of the field to service our offense and um, you know work scout team against um, our offense so that they get ready for the opposing defenses that we were getting ready for. So we didn't get a whole lot of practice time with them. So this is really and truly the first time that we're able to take the field and have those guys with us from start to finish. And so our main goal, uh, our main objective uh, is just to help them build a good fundamental base and get them ready to uh, compete in the fall and to have them um, become more familiar with all the intricacies of the defense and their assignments, responsibilities, techniques, things of that nature. So uh, assuming we can be where we want to be, uh, at the end of those 15 practices, we'll be anxious to get ready to uh, look forward towards the challenges of the 21 season. So um, with that, I'll open it up to questions if anybody has something they'd like to ask. Thank you, Coach. The, the first question this afternoon is from Scott Docterman. Hey, yes, Jay, Scott. how are you? Good, Scott. How are you? I'm doing well. Um, you uh, described, I think on signing day, Logan Jones is a rocked up dude. <laughs> and I think his numbers have kind of shown that in the weight room. Uh, also having such a gap in your up and very few upperclassmen other than Zach Van Valkenburg, how important is it for Logan to be, to move himself into that rotation and what can he bring you as a unit? Well, yes, it's important for him to, to try to make a push to, uh, you know, improve throughout spring football and get himself in a p position where he has a chance to, you know, contribute on fall uh, Saturday afternoons for us. There's no doubt uh, because he is mature beyond his years, so to speak, physically, uh, you know, that gives him a, a, an opportunity to go ahead and compete, you know, versus other Big Ten players where some guys who aren't as far, far along developmentally might not quite be ready for that yet. But, um, you know, he's shown in the first several practices that we've had that a lot of the strengths and uh, the things that he's um, the numbers that he's posted up in the white room have been able to translate out onto the practice field. And uh, again, what you're talking about him, a guy like Ethan Herkut, uh, Lucas Van Ness, Wyatt Black, any of those guys, really the main challenge is just to get their fundamental base brought up to speed so that, um, you know, they're able to take their physical tools and use them to their ability. The next question, Coach, is from Chad Leistico. Yeah, sure, Chad. Hi, Jay. Uh, you made a great point there. You haven't been in a spring practice either at Iowa. That's crazy to think about. <laughs> I'm a spring practice rookie. So, yeah. So how do you, uh, how do you sift through? you got a lot of young guys. I mean, how do you, you only get 15 practices. What is your approach in kind of sifting through these guys and making sure that you're not missing something or that you're, you know, giving everyone a, an equal chance. I mean, how do you approach that as a coach? Well, they're, they're, um, they're all really getting about equal reps. We haven't sat down really and tallied it up to be honest with you, but the way we rotate them um, in individual drills, for sure. I know everybody's getting equal reps. 
And I think that, um, you know, if we went back and looked at what we've done in teamwork and what we've done in group work against the offensive line, I think all those reps are pretty balanced up. So I, I feel very comfortable in saying that, you know, everybody's been on film and given adequate opportunities to show what they can do over seven practices. And then I think the same will be true over the remaining eight. Coach, the next question is from Leah Van. Sure. Hi, Leah. Hi, Coach. I'm Leah. I'm from the Cedar Rapids Gazette. I'm new. So nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. And, um, yeah, my question is, this is like the second straight season that y'all are replacing, almost like rebuilding the defensive line from scratch. Of course, you have one returning starter. I'm wondering what challenges come with that and how Iowa has been able to do it so successfully the past two seasons. Well, I think it first comes down to recruiting philosophy. Um, and if you've heard Kelvin Bell talk about it before, it's the same thing that you probably heard Coach Ferentz or myself say. We don't really recruit defensive tackles or defensive ends. We just recruit defensive linemen. We look for guys that have the skill set that we're trying to find, um, you know, whether we're evaluating games or watching film. And then, you know, what, what uh, determines whether they become ends or tackles uh, really is, is based on the kind of growth and, and maturity that they go through physically. Some guys will start out as ends and then move inside you know, to tackle or nose. Other guys will start outside and stay outside. Uh, you know, depending on the amount of weight their, their bodies and frames are able to accommodate. But there's that side of it. And then the other side of it is just really and truly having a system, you know, which Coach Parker's had in place here for a long time where we don't deviate a lot um, from year to year. So the guys, once they get into the system, they continue to hear the same types of things, the same coaching points, a lot of the same fundamentals, techniques, responsibilities year after year after year. And so um, even though you may have a, a guy who's, whose uh, name is new to the lineup, he's been through a lot of the very same things in terms of his development of the guys who've been playing before him. And so um, it's a combination of those two things, I think, together that allow us to do what we do up front in the D-line. What challenges come with replacing the defensive line? Well, I think the, the unknown is really the only challenge. You've got to bring these guys along and just have trust and faith in them and our system. And uh, you don't really know until you get to game time, you know, exactly what's going to happen. But time has proven uh, through the system and through the recruiting that if we just continue to do the things that we've done with developing these guys, that things will play out, um, you know, in, in a way that's favorable for us. But, um, you know, it's no different than any other set of challenges, I guess. You just have to have to uh, – you know, be very um, dogmatic about your approach and, and very straightforward and uh, recognize what those challenges are and, and, and uh, deal with them head on. Coach, the next question is from Tom Kakert. Yeah, hi, Tom. Hey, Jay. Hope you're doing well. Um, wanted to ask you about a couple of guys. Uh, Yahweh Black moving inside, um, just kind of yeah, I think Kirk said last year at the end of the year, sometimes he was playing a little too nice. Have you guys seen kind of a more of an edge from him? And Ethan Herkett's name has come up a lot this spring. Um, what have you seen from him? Yeah, YA is, he's got a good demeanor about him. If you talk to him off the field, yeah, sure. He, he's, a, he's a really nice guy, uh, easy to talk to, very, very personable, all those types of things. But, you know, when he puts his pads on and uh, really gets down to business, you know, he, he's got a, a good football demeanor about him. And I think we've seen some of that come out this spring. Um, you know, he, he is great length and great size. He's nearly 300 pounds right now, which is up from what he was obviously when he first came in here. So he's going to be a big, big guy before it's all said and done. And um, I think he's, he's on a good path right now. And uh, we just got to keep him moving that direction. So feel good about him. Ethan, as you mentioned, his name has been, been brought up a lot. A uh, really hard-nosed guy, was a middle linebacker in high school, converted to defensive end when he came here, uh, has put on some size and strength, and uh, really has done a good job in spring practice thus far. Super locked in and focused kind of guy. I mean, when you tell him something, he's looking you dead in the eye and taking every word verbatim. And, and uh, you can see day to day when you tell him to, to uh, make a correction on a technique, the very next day he's out there um, – you know, doing everything within his power to make sure that he hasn't, doesn't have to be told the same thing twice. Hard worker, very diligent, um, and off to a good start. The next question, Coach, is from David Eicholt. Sure. Hey, David. Hey, Jay. Hope you're doing well. Uh, 
John Wagner, kind of an interesting story. Cracked the two deep, start out as an edge guy, then moved inside, and you guys moved him back to the outside. What, what kind of went into the decision to move him to the outside? What have you seen from him uh, this spring, and how much are you going to rely on him to kind of elevate his game uh, as you guys get closer to the season? Well, I think he, he's already uh, begun that process of elevating his game. He's off to a good practice this spring. I think he realizes um, – you know, there's now a window of opportunity with uh, some of the seniors from last year, upperclassmen being gone that were here before. And um, now it's up to him to seize the moment and take advantage of that. And I think that's what he's preparing himself to do. And, and we'll be ready to go, uh, you know, when we get to the season to, to take advantage of that opportunity. But uh, he's a versatile guy. He's, he's got the length uh, and enough mobility to play outside, but he's also got enough size and strength to play inside. So, you know, while most of his reps um, have been, uh, on the edge at end so far this spring, uh, particularly in passing situations on third down and whatnot. I think there's there's still the potential for him to play inside if we need him to do that. But um, he, he's, he's doing well. He's making good progress. And uh, he's right up there with uh, Zach Van Valkenburg, probably is one of the most consistent and steady guys that we've had so far this spring. Coach, we'll circle back to Scott Docterman. Yeah, I wanted to ask about Logan Lee. Uh, there seemed to be some excitement about him last year and, and whether he was inside or outside. How has he progressed? I know he's had some injuries. And do you see him as kind of a versatile guy that could play either spot or is he settling down in inside or outside? Well, he, he, uh, he hasn't done a lot thus far because he's still in the recovery process, but he's uh, very, very close to getting back out there. Uh, I'll let Coach Ferentz elaborate on any in injury situations if uh, you need more detail on that. But he's, he's a lot like John Wagner in terms of his frame and his versatility. Um, again, we, we've played him in both inside and outside positions. Uh, I think really where he winds up is going to be more dependent on him than anything else in that, um, you know, however the competition shakes out where he's needed is, will be where he's at. Um, and uh, I, I do think that he's got a ton of upside and a ton of potential. And if we can get him out in the practice field and get some stack, a bunch of, of practice days, much less practice weeks or months together, that uh, there's, there's a big ceiling and, and growth and improvement possible with, uh, with Logan. And um, real hard working guy. I know he's going to give us everything he's got. And I, I think the sky's the limit for him. Uh, we just get him going. Coach, we'll circle back to Leah Van. Yeah, I was wondering um, if you have any individual players that you think are standing out to you right now in spring practice. I know we've mentioned a couple of names, but I wanted to know from your perspective, like who specifically has really stood out to you and why? Well, that's, it's tough to choose. I think everybody's given us a great effort and that's really first and foremost, we just want guys to go out there and, and you know, day in and day out, play with great energy and passion and give us the best that they've got. Um, and I, I think we're getting that type of effort out of, out of, the, out of the group. Um, you know, if I had to, had to single out a guy, I guess it'd be Zach Van Valkenburg, just because of how he goes about it. Um, he, he practices extremely hard, uh, even though he had some accolades uh, last year, as far as the all Big Ten stuff goes. You know, you wouldn't know that, uh, that you would think he's, he was coming in here with a chip on his shoulder and, and had a lot to prove uh, That's because that's just how he approaches it. But you're going to get the same thing out of him no matter what the circumstances are. Uh, he's been a great leader in our room and become a, a leader on the defense as well. Highly respected guy and um, obviously showed a lot of production on the field last year and, and will be counted on to do so again. And I, I would you know, again, I hate to single anybody out because I think there's lots of other names that could be brought into the discussion, but if I had to pick one. That would be where I would start. Coach, the next question is from Tom Caker. Um, Jay, you've been doing this a long time. Uh, part of your job is recruiting. Uh, this past year has been pretty challenging. Mm -hmm. How have you gone about trying to do good evaluation when you can't get in the school to talk to anybody that you need to talk to? You can't get out to games. You can't have kids at camps. How have you gone about that? And how, how challenging has that been? Well, it's challenging, I guess, for everybody. And that's, if there is a saving grace in the whole process, you know that everybody's in the same boat as far as that goes, not only within the conference, but nationwide. Um, not to have the opportunity to have some of these guys through your camps in June 
uh, not to be able to go out and watch them play in their games on Friday night. You're, you're really hamstrung with um, and limited to just really doing uh, a lot of work on huddle and watching their, their game tapes and highlights and then trying to get a hold of anybody and everybody that uh, has valuable insight as to what you're trying to find out about the particular recruit, whoever it might be. But um, all you can do is what you can do and, and play by the rules and make the most of the situation with the information that you have at hand. Fortunately, last year, a lot of the guys that uh, we ended up signing in the previous class as sophomores had already been through camp here and on campus. And so a lot of them had the exposure and uh, we had some of the, the face time with them that you would like to have, even though we didn't get them in last year's camp, we got them two years ago in camp. So if we can get out of this uh, cycle that we're in and get back on our track of being into camps in June and being able to go out and watch games this fall, we should be back on track and in pretty good shape. But I think we could weather the storm. We did weather the storm fine for one year, but I'd hate to think that you'd have to do it two years in a row. That'd be really hard. Coach, we're going to take one more question, and the final question will come from Scott Docterman. Yeah, Jay, I got kind of a two-parter here. I mean, it seems like every year we ask you or somebody else about how in God's green earth are you going to replace so-and-so last year, Epineza, year before that was Anthony Nelson, and now you've got Davion Nixon. My first question is, is Noah Shannon that guy you're hoping to steps in and maybe, does, maybe doesn't have the physical skills that Davion has, but creates that kind of uh, effort and and secondly is where does uh, Deontay Craig kind of stand on your, uh, in the lineup right now? Sure. And Noah has had a really good start in spring practice. Um, I, I've seen a change in him. Not that it was, there was ever anything wrong with how he was before by, by any stretch of the imagination, but I think he's elevated his game a notch or two, uh, putting in super effort, um, leadership, production, quality of play, all those things, I think, uh, the needle's pointing for sure in the right direction with him. And, you know, to sit here and say that he could duplicate or be compared to uh, Davion really isn't fair. We're not going to sit here and compare one guy versus the other. They're, everything's different about them from size to skill set to whatever. But from within, uh, you know, Noah's uh, frame and his capabilities and, and uh, you know, his talents and all those things, I think he's maximizing everything he's got and is really on a good path right now. And uh, we're, we're happy with the progress that he's making. He's doing a really nice job. Uh, Deontay Craig has been playing in the whole time. And I don't see that changing unless, uh, you know, injuries or something like that would force us to, uh, you know, to consider something else. But he, he is doing a really nice job as well. Again, I mentioned from the beginning that what we're trying to do with all these young guys is really build a good uh, fundamental base and a foundation for them to work off of. Uh, Deontay's doing a good job. Uh, he's got some real knack in rushing the passer and is doing a good job with that. And, um, you know, we got to bring along the, the run defense fundamentals right, right with that. And, um, you know, he's making good progress in that area too. But like Ethan Herkut, he put on some good weight in the off season is stronger. He's bigger. Uh, he's a little more physical and, uh, we just need to keep him on that continuum of, of growth and, and pointing that needle in a positive direction, which is he's had really seven good practices and hopefully eight more to go. All right, Coach. Welcome Thank you. to Spring Ball. Thanks for sharing your time today. Thank you, guys. I appreciate your coverage. Have a good afternoon. Thank you very much. Uh, as Coach Neiman slides out, uh, wide receivers coach Kelton Copeland is set to join us. Good afternoon, Coach. Hello. Hello. Good to see you guys. Even though it's virtual, it's, it's still good to see everybody and it's, ladies. Uh, we thank you for uh, giving us your time this afternoon. I'll give you a chance here to throw out a couple of opening statements and then I'll throw it out the questions for you. Yes, sir. Thank you, Chris. Uh, you know, just want to start things off. We, we just finished up practice seven yesterday. So we're basically almost right at the midway point. So this is perfect timing for me to, to talk about, you know, how we uh, progressed through seven practices and, uh, you know, going all the way back to practice number one, we, we don't use the term practice in our room a whole lot. I always talk about these are opportunities, especially in spring ball, because, you know, this is time for, for guys, whether they're, they're so-called seasoned vets, like your, your Tyrone Tracy's and Max Cooper's all the way to the, uh, the brand, brand new guys, guys that are just in their fourth month on, on campus, uh, guys like Keegan Johnson and Arlen Bruce, this is an opportunity to improve and an opportunity also for us as a coaching staff to see, you know, what's going to work for us moving forward with the personnel we have. 
and uh, you know what's not going to work so well, and you know what can we translate over from last year? What have we learned from last year? Um, you know, going through the self scout and the good, the bad, and the ugly, and then applying some of those things that we've learned to uh, to move forward to help us progress as an offense and as a staff, and uh, you know most importantly for our player development. So uh, it's been a very productive spring at this point. Um, you know, I, I've seen on social media some of the trending things about some of the guys uh, in, in our room. Uh, starting off with Tyrone Tracy, he's done an excellent job. Not, not a good job, an excellent job of being an upstanding citizen, number one, and being a, a, um, a leader uh, that's going to hold his teammates accountable and set standards. And, and he set some pretty high standards and goals for not only himself, uh, but for, for the room as well. So I commend him on that. He's done an excellent job in that regard. Um, and then, you know, talking about some of the other guys that are, that are you know, pretty common names around here. Uh, Nico has done a good job. He hadn't practiced a whole lot. Um, so he's doing what he can, um, you know, helping us out in the meeting rooms. And he's been tremendous that way. Matt Cooper has really stepped up his game. You know, he's been a guy in the past that, you know, for whatever reason, hadn't been able to find a lot of traction, uh, you know, throughout his career. You know, kind of spotty here and there playing uh, as, as a freshman and then so forth and so on on special teams. But he's done a really good job of taking the opportunity to, to advance and uh, to move the room forward. And that's what we talk about in our room all the time. Uh, and then you have other guys, guys that have been in the program, but haven't necessarily had an, a chance to, uh, you know, get a foothold and, and necessarily, you know, put their name out there. You know, guys like Desmond Hudson, uh, Jackson Ritter, just to name a few that have made steady strides, have made, have made really good strides so far, you know, throughout seven opportunities. And then, you know, the, the, the common trend that, the, you know, everything's about trending and what's, What's going viral? I guess if you're going to talk in those terms, you know, I know there's going to be questions about the two two new guys, uh, Keegan Johnson and Arlen Bruce. They've done a really good job. They've done a really good job. I, I can only imagine, you know, I think about myself when I was their age, 18 years old, coming out of high school. Um, first off, when I was their age, I was still in high school. Let's start there. And, uh, you know, I was thinking about things like going to the prom and, you know, what, how cool my car is going to look and that that type of stuff. And then spending the last few months with my family before I go off to college. And they're already doing that. They've already, you know, kissed mom and dad goodbye. And they're, and they're here. They're here on campus and, and they're learning. And they're learning at a fast rate. And I give them a lot of credit because, you know, I don't think I could have done it uh, at their age. And they're doing it and doing it at a high level. So they've done a good job. And I know a lot of people have spoken on them, players and coaches alike, have spoken on their progress so far. And I guess I'll be the, the one to tag along on that bandwagon and say they're doing a good job. They're progressing pretty well. So, you know, with that statement, I'll open it up for any questions you guys might have. All right, we do have some hands up for you, Coach. And the first question this afternoon is from David Eicholt. Hey, Kelton, how are you? I'm great, David, how are you? Good, man, thanks for taking the time. Uh, you know, Tyrone Tracy, I think two years ago, you called him phenomenal and he was blowing up your phone in this first summer fall camp, asking you all these questions about learning three different positions. And he talked a little bit yesterday about going through a little bit of a, a rut last year where he's caught call himself slipping. He said, he said that he had to do a lot of self-talk. Um, I guess, how would you describe Tyrone's mental growth as far as just being a leader on this team and him basically now being stepping into that fit, fit, uh, phase in his career where he's kind of the face of the new wave of Iowa wide receivers. Yeah. I'll start off with, with saying he's been exceptional. You know, uh, first off, you said three positions. I'll correct you on that. It's four, actually four. He's the only guy uh, to date that can play any of the four spots being our Z, X, Y, or F positions in, in our offense, how we label them. So uh, that in itself is, is saying a lot. And he was, he's been doing that now for, for two seasons, two, four years. So that said in itself says a lot about not only, his eagerness to learn, not only his uh, his athletic ability, which we've all seen on display mo uh, multiple times by now, but most importantly, his football IQ and his his willingness and wanting to to take charge. Right, he, any way that he can get on the field, coming from you know his first year on campus to to now him being you know somewhat of a of a vet, uh, he's just always always looking for the next challenge. And, and you know, I've told stories in the past to you guys. You know, in these press conferences about him wearing me out and in the recruiting process. And then we first got on campus about, Coach, what else can I do to earn a role? Um, and, it's, and a lot of guys talk about that. I will say that a lot of guys say that, and it sounds good, and it gets coaches fired up and excited about him. But I'm telling you what, this Tyrone Tracy now, he, he is a man of his word. I mean, he doesn't just, just talk to talk, he walks the walk. And any capacity that I have challenged him in, he has not only met the challenge, but he has exceeded it. 
And I'm, I'm so proud of him. I'm proud for him and I'm more, more than excited to see what the future holds for him. He, he's, he's doing a tremendous job, a, a really good job so far. Coach, the next question is from Scott Docterman. Hey, Cope, how are you? Hey, Scott, I'm great. How are you? I'm doing well. Wanted to ask about uh, Desmond Hudson. I know two years ago, I think he played in three games and there was that decision whether you move him up or if you hold him back and redshirt him and you ultimately decided to redshirt him. He seems to be that perfect build, what you might want at X. How is he progressing and has he put himself in competition to be, you know, whether it's a starter or at least a rotational guy at that position? Absolutely. Desmond has done a really good job. I remember having that conversation about Desmond, you know, going off of that his freshman year. And uh, the making the decision to, uh, you know, hold him back a little bit. And he did some, some good things in those three games that he was able to participate in. And, uh, you know, the, the end goal for me is to help these guys excel to whatever level they can. Right. Um, and Desmond's one of those guys that, you know, when we, we brought him in. He was he was uh, predominantly a basketball player in high school. He played football, obviously. But I think he, he would be the first one to tell you that he was more comfortable. In a, on a basketball court more than he was on a football field uh, to start his, his college career. So I knew that going in. We knew that as a staff as we, when we uh, decided to uh, recruit him and sign him to a scholarship here. And he, he's done that. He's done all the necessary steps to develop. Now, you know, with that being said, there were some things that happened uh, past, past season with the COVID and all the, the contact tracing and all of those things that every school and every, um, every staff every football team had to deal with last season. And he was, he was a victim of it. He was a victim of it and it severely hurt his development. And it's to no fault of his own. I mean, right. I mean, he's just, you know, trying to be a good teammate. And next thing you know, he has a roommate or somebody he's working out with test positive and then everybody's knocked out. Right. So he's, he was in quarantine. I want to say he was in quarantine at least three different times just in the summer. So that put him behind the eight ball right off the bat. And he's, like I said, he's one of those guys that he needs every rep, every opportunity to continue his development. So that, that set him back a little bit. And then, you know, got into the season. He had a, a minor injury that kept him out uh, during, I think it was uh, about the second week of training camp. So that set him back even further. So, you know, as frustrated as I was, I can only imagine how frustrating it was for him to have those setbacks. But now here we go, 2021, it's a brand new year, a fresh start for everybody. And he, he's done a great job of taking advantage of the opportunities. You know, he's been a uh, part of every workout he can. You know, we don't have, um, you know, all of the issues that we had last summer with, with the contact tracing and things like that. So we're fortunate that way. Um, and he's taking advantage of that fact. He's done a great job in the weight room, talking to Ray and Cody and the rest of the strength staff. Uh, every day he's making strides on the football field. So you're right. You're right, Scott. He's a young man that, that we need to continue to develop. He fits the mold physically, you know, his, if you look at his hands, you know, I've, I've been told I have big hands, his hand, I feel like his hands are twice as big as mine. So <laughs> he's got all the tools, you know, he's six, three and a half, six, four, whatever he is, you know, he weighs the white rate and he just needs to continue to develop, you know, some of those intangible small details with route running and understanding the game of football, but he's on the right track. So, you know, the next um, eight opportunities that we have left in spring ball, and then uh, just as importantly into the summer, you know, those guys are working on their own for the most part. And then, you know, training camp, once we get to August, guys willing, that, that, that time frame, that window that we have there is going to be huge, not only for, for us, but specifically for him and his development. See what he can, how far he can come, you know, we're getting ready to play games next fall. Coach, the next question is from Chad Leistico. Hey, Coach. Hey, Chad, how you doing? Good. Uh, I don't, it doesn't seem like an accident that almost every – player we've talked to so far has mentioned Arland and, and Keegan. And so I don't want to be guilty of overhyping, but what have they done? Uh, maybe that is making these guys mention them, you know, often unprompted. Sometimes we ask about them, I will say, but um, what are they doing in practice to, that they're being mentioned, you know, ahead of, you know, some other more veteran guys or. They're, they're think? taking advantage of the opportunity. That's what they're doing. And, you know, in a cliche answer, they're taking advantage of the opportunities you know, each and every individual we are put in strategic situations, right? To either uh, to either block somebody or catch a ball or run the ball or something like that. And you know, I'm not gonna put a guy in a bad situation. Meaning, if you're not built for that opportunity, I'm not gonna put you in that situation. So, going back to the recruiting process, we recruited 
Arlen specifically for a role. We recruited Keegan specifically for a role. So just putting them in, in situations, you know, to see if they can, if they're ready. All right. What can they handle? What can't they handle? And, you know, be honest with you, there hadn't been much that they can't handle uh, up to this point. Now, do they need to learn the system better and they need to learn the details? Absolutely. Obviously, this is not high school football. Uh, far from it. So, you know, are they finished or polished products? Not even close. I'd, I'd be lying to you all if I told you that. So they have a long way to go, no doubt. But, you know, each and every day, it's an opportunity and there's a challenge. My job is to challenge these guys and put them in situations to see if they can handle that challenge. And probably the reason why uh, their name keeps coming up is because they keep answering the bill. You know, they keep, uh, you know, succeeding. When they're challenged, they keep succeeding. And it doesn't mean they don't have mistakes. doesn't mean they miss assignments or anything like that. But when they get the opportunities, they're doing a good job of taking advantage of them. Coach, the next question is from Leah Van. Hey, Coach. I'm Leah I'm with the Cedar Rapids Gazette. I'm new this year, so it's nice to meet you. Hey, hi, nice, nice to meet you, Leah. Yeah, so I've talked to a couple of your recruits, and they were all really excited about being wide receivers at Iowa. And I was wondering, uh, I was looking through the roster yesterday. There's like 16 guys listed at wide receiver and like eight as tight ends, which I thought was funny because Iowa's kind of tight end university, as everybody says. So yes. I wanted to know what your vision is for like this position and what it was when you first got here. And now how do you think it's going and what where you see going in the future? Well, Leah, that's a great question. Uh, starting with uh, the end of your question, you know, what, what was it like when I first got here in 2017 spring? Uh, it feels like that was 10 years ago. Man, I, I got to tell you, it feels like, uh, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing that these guys have made me feel like I'm old, but man, it feels like that was 10 years ago. Um, no, we, it wasn't in the best shape. And I remember some of those press conferences, some of those questions about, you know, how, how are you guys going to be back in 2017? And a lot of unanswered questions out there. Um, and it was just, it's, it's still the same today. Same way I answered those questions back then, it's still the same today. It's about taking advantage of our opportunities. And, uh, you know, it's one step at a time. You know, um, you know, one of my mentors always says, you know, how do you eat elephant? Well, you can't eat it all at one time. You eat it one, one bite at a time. So it's one day at a time. All right, if, if you're going to make strides and you're going to do something impactful in life, then you just got to take it one step at a time. And, and that's been our approach. And that, that's how we talk about it in our room. It's not, it's not, you know, the big scrimmage day. It's not uh, Tuesday practice. It's opportunity number six. It's opportunity number seven. And, uh, you know, God's willing, we'll have opportunity number eight uh, tomorrow morning at about, you know, 7.30, 8 o'clock. So uh, that's what it's about. And, um, you know, to answer your question about, um, the numbers and all that stuff, you know, we've been, we've been fortunate. We have a great staff here. We have a great staff, particularly our, our recruiting staff, Tyler Barnes, Scott South May, they do an excellent job, not a good job. They do an excellent job of giving us information going out and, uh, you know, anything that we need as far as finding out guys, GPAs, or maybe somebody that I missed in my area or receiver that may be under the radar. Those guys do an excellent job of getting us that information and getting us in the loop on those type things. And, and uh, the numbers, I would say, reflect that in our room specifically, because uh, we have we have some options now and uh, it is a competition. You know, I feel really good about the guys in our room. And, um, you know, I, I coach my guys like literally they're my guys. Right. We, I feel like they're my, my little brothers. I'm getting almost to the age now where I can't call them my little brothers anymore, but I still think of my little brothers. And, and that's how we, we do business in our room. But with all that being said, it is a competition. And this is a business, right? And we're based on, we're judged on wins and losses, right? Production. So potential is one thing. We have a lot of potential in our room, but ultimately it comes down to production. And the guys that produce and show that they can produce on a, on a uh, regular basis, on a consistent basis, those are guys that will have an opportunity to produce on Saturdays. And, and that's what it comes down to. Coach, we'll take time for two more questions. The uh, first one is from Tom Caker. Hey, Kelton. Hope you're doing hey. well. Um, I'm doing great. Uh, wanted to ask you, last year the, the run game had more explosive runs, and part of that was the blocking that the receivers did, particularly Brandon Smith was very good in that area. Who from this current group has kind of been excelling in that area? Oh, shoot, that's a great question. Um, I'd say it's a, it's a collective effort at this point. You know, we, we haven't found, you know, Brandon, you, you mentioned Brandon. Brandon, uh, you know, played the exposition. Uh, directly like that's the only position he pretty much played in our offense right and so we could pretty much game plan around him being in that spot and knowing that okay when we design these plays and, and game plan for our opponent 
we knew what we were going to put guys in. And Brandon, obviously, like you said, is a bit, was a big part of our run game and then our success in that area. So that's part of this, this spring, um, spring evaluation and, and getting things started going back from self-scout is finding out who is going to be the next guy or guys. So right now, Tom, I honestly, I can't answer that question and put a finger on, you know, this guy or that guy or this number of guys is going to help us in the run game or be that type of guy. That's what spring uh, ball is for. So again, whether it be catching the ball, whether it be running after the catch or blocking, which is just important to anything else in receiver play, that is part of the evaluation. That's part of the challenge is putting those guys in that in those situations to see who can handle it and who can execute at a high level. So I don't have that answer quite yet. Maybe hopefully, uh, you know, fast forward to the training camp next time we see each other, hopefully in, in person, uh, no doubt. But whenever we see each other next, hopefully I have a better accurate uh, answer for you. Coach, the final question this afternoon is from Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Kelton, uh, that, it's kind of a two-parter here. One is a couple of your redshirt freshmen, Deontay Vines and Quavon Matthews, kind of got lost in the donut hole because of the COVID year. They didn't get a chance to play, plus they had a lot of upperclassmen. How are they progressing? And then two, how do you handle ego management at your position? Because you deal with the highest egos out of any position on the field. It doesn't matter. You can go to any team in America, and it's, this, it's that way. And I know last year was tough at times. How do you deal with that uh, along with the, the progress of Vines and Matthews? Well, I'll answer it backwards. You know, first off, I would say uh, Phil Parker may have something to say about me having the hardest <laughs> job with egos. I tell you that. I've, I've coached DBs. Uh, it's been a while now. I've coached DBs and, uh, you know, they, that's a whole different beast in itself. So I, I, I bet if you went and asked each coach uh, position by position, you know, do they have their troubles? Do they have uh, their issues? No doubt we all have our issues. But, uh, Scott, I'm, I'm blessed. I'm blessed to be able to be around a bunch of great guys, not only in my room, but our, our entire team, our staff. You know, they do a, do a great job. Like I talked about before, they do a great job. We do a great job recruiting here. And I knew that coming here when I, when I accepted the job. And nothing has changed in that regard. There's a special kind of young man that can fit in this program. And then there's other individuals that is just not a good fit. So the ego part is really not a big deal. Now, if I'm being honest, receivers, uh, we have a way about us. All right? We're always open, never closed, uh, never covered. And uh, we also all, all should get the ball on every play. Only problem is there only, there's only one ball on every play. So that's part of my job, all right? just uh, to manage that and, and um, you know, get over that deal. Uh, but more importantly, getting to, to the first part of your question about Deontay and uh, Quavon, they've done a, done a really good job. You know, like you said, you know, this unfortunate situation that we were all put in, specifically the players with COVID and all that, it, it set everybody's uh, development back. Just, it just really did. So uh, we got in a situation where we, um, you know, things got cut short on August 11th. Things got shut down. Uh, and then, you know, here we go. We're playing again. So the training camp that we usually would get, the summer training that, that these young men would usually get and need to play at this level, they didn't get. They didn't get it all. So um, guys just kind of got, you know, wherever you're at, wherever you're at, that's just where you kind of stayed. If, you, if, if at all, you didn't fall back. So it was unfortunate, but like I said, it's 2021 now. Everything is progressing. Everything is getting a little better as far as the situation. Hopefully everybody's getting vaccinated and staying healthy and everything is progressing. And, you know, you know, me, I'm keeping my fingers crossed and keep praying that, you know, hopefully by August, if not sooner, things will be back to normal. So guys like Quavon, guys like Deontay Vons will have a chance to, uh, you know, progress and, and help us because they both are very skilled, uh, you know, Deontay and Quavon for that matter. Uh, they both were skillful returners in, in high school, uh, did a lot of great things with the ball in high school. So I'm excited. I'm excited to see these guys get out and perform and be able to do what they what they know they can do and what I know they can do. So um, it's been frustrating at times, but like I said, slowly every day it seems like things are getting back to normal, and these guys are starting to show you know what we were hoping they would be able to show coming out of high school. Thank you, All right, Coach. We greatly appreciate the insight, and uh, thank you for your time this afternoon. All right, thank you, everybody. Stay safe. Go Hawks. As Coach Copeland slides out, uh, special teams coordinator LaVar Woods will join us in just one minute. Probably don't need to remind everybody, but I will, that uh, Fran McCaffrey has a scheduled Zoom at 1.30. So we'll try and be as efficient with our next 
18 minutes as possible. Special Teams Coordinator LeVar Woods, can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. All right, thanks for joining us this afternoon. I'll give you a chance to make some opening remarks and then we'll throw it out to some questions. Sounds good. Hey, thank you everyone for being here. Uh, it's good seeing your faces virtually. Uh, looking forward to seeing you guys uh, in person soon. Uh, you know, starting off, I wanna thank everyone again, like I said, for being here. There's lots going on, lots of things you guys could be covering, uh, but you're here uh, talking about Iowa and Iowa special teams. And you know, I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, mention one of one special teams beat Nick that is no longer uh, here with us and Mark Emmert. You know, he's uh, moved on pursuing other endeavors, but, you know, just grateful for his, uh, for him covering special teams, his interest in special teams, and he's on to uh, uh, different things at the, at the Press Citizen, but always appreciate him and, uh, and covering Iowa special teams. And, uh, you know, I, I have not forgotten, if he ever sees I have not forgotten, I promise him a position meeting uh, access someday, whenever that, whenever that day comes back, hopefully we'll get a chance to do that. But, um, you know, I want to thank Mark for all that, and thank you guys for being here. Uh, you know, just starting off a little little bit about the, some of the things we're excited about uh, looking forward to uh, this spring. One is just being in spring practice. You know, haven't done that in, it seems like, forever. And spring practice is a little bit different than in fall camp. You know, last year in 2020, we were cramming everything in at the last second. You know, not a ton of teaching. is more installing. Right now in spring practice, is about teaching and developing and coaching and trying to improve players and, and taking some young players and put them in a position where they can compete in the fall. And so just thankful for that opportunity, uh, able to do that right now. And uh, I'm excited about that, excited about the way everyone's been working. Everyone has been, uh, everyone's been working, everyone's been pushing. It's a, there's a, a unique focus this year on trying to improve uh, and trying to improve overall football skills. So we've been working on that. But what I mean by that is just trying to take an offensive player, trying to help him become a tackler in space, right? Which you use on special teams. It's also, um, translates just become an overall football player, a defensive player, you know, learning ball security and the importance of ball security. So a heavy focus on that as far as the team goes. Uh, everyone's working, everyone's involved, everyone's learning. So, uh, you know, that's been a lot of fun seeing some of the growth uh, with that. Excited about the way uh, the guys are working, some emerging, some emerging leaders, some guys that uh, we didn't quite know about last year. And then really pushing forward right now and, and trying to uh, make their own mark and try to create an opportunity for themselves. As far as uh, specialists go, right? So right now, as a kicker, we lose Keith Duncan. I think everyone uh, that covers in media knows Keith Duncan, and you know there's a there's a little bit of a little bit of a, a, a hole missing with Keith Duncan just from a personality standpoint. But Caleb Shudak has stepped in and he's done a tremendous job from a leadership standpoint. We're really excited about him and the way he's working and the way. Uh, he's tracking in his opportunity. Uh, super excited for him. Uh, also pushing him right now are Lucas Amaya and Aaron Blom, uh, two younger guys that, that are really you know, working well and, and doing well. Then you look at the, uh, the snapper position. We've got Austin Spiewak returning. You know, got game experience last year with valuable game experience. Decided to come back for a, a sixth year, which is crazy to think about. But he decided to come back and appreciate his leadership, his efforts. Really looking forward um, to, to work with him throughout the year. Uh, the guys that are pushing him right now, Liam Reardon, and then also uh, Zach Kluver, two young guys that are, that are pushing forward and making strides every day. And then the punter position, talk about Torrey Taylor. I believe he went with you guys yesterday, talked to the media. Uh, Torrey, you know, I think he kind of burst on the scene last year. Statistically, it was really good. Technically, some things to clean up, and that's what we've been focused on here focused on here this spring and his main focus has been spiral punts and punting from the pocket. It's a little bit different for him uh, being Australian, but being able to do that here and add that to his game, he put out some really good punts so far this spring, uh, but you know, he's work, worked very diligently on that. And then you also have pushing him, uh, Ryan Gersande and, and Nick Phelps, two, two guys that have kept pushing him uh, each and every day. So that's the, the specialist position, the returner position, Real quickly, you know, we lose Amir smith Marset, the kick returner, which, you know, is a big, a big void to fill, but we've got a lot of candidates that we, that we feel good about. We've got a deep pool of candidates, some younger guys, some unheralded guys that we, that we feel good about. Also some, some, uh, uh, some talented ball carriers, and we'll, Tyrone Tracy, uh, Goodson, you know, Charlie Jones, Reganey, 
uh, Cooper, guys that we feel like can add to that mix. Also, Arlen Bruce and Keegan Johnson, some younger guys that really should be in high school right now, but they've done a really good job so far. They've been here. And then the punt returner position, I worked heavily, heavily on that so far in spring. You know, Charlie's got a pretty good lead on that, but still, you know, working hard, looking at Tyrone Tracy, who I think he can go back there and do that. Uh, Regani and then Cooper as well, that game experience. So, you know, feel good about the guys where they're at. I feel like we are a little bit deeper, maybe, at uh, overall special teams, and that's a credit to the guys and how they've been working and how they've been, how they've been pushing. But um, with that, I'll take any questions you guys may have. All right, Coach, Mark Emmert is not here, but there are a lot of people in the chat ready to talk special teams. And the first question is from Chad Leistico. Hi, LeVar. I've got two questions. Uh, one's from Keith Duncan. He, uh, he wants to know uh, why you never ran a fake with the most athletic kicker in Iowa history. And then my question is, um, Caleb Shudak, did, was, it, was it much of a recruiting pitch to bring him back for the sixth year? Or what is kind of his motivation as you see it to kind of be, hopefully for him, the guy in that battle this year? Thanks. First and foremost, the most, uh, most athletic kicker in Iowa history is probably going to get a run of fake this year with Caleb Shudak. So, uh, you know, we spared Keith Duncan that embarrassment uh, last year, the last two years. Uh, but with Caleb, you know, I don't think it's much of a recruiting pitch. I think Caleb knows who he is and what he wants to do, what he wants to accomplish. And uh, I think it was very important for him to come back and finish with his classmates, finish with his teammates, and then, you know, have this opportunity. And I'm really looking forward to it. He, he's done a tremendous job uh, from a leadership standpoint, development standpoint. As you guys, um, I, I tell a lot of people that, uh, you know, he's a really, really good kicker. And we've had two very good kickers here. Uh, people just don't know Caleb as well, and they're, they're going to get to see him here this spring and, and next fall, so I'm excited for him. The next question, Coach, is from Rick Brown. How you doing, Rick? Rick, you'll need to unmute, please. Classic Zoom. Classic Zoom etiquette. Uh, Rick, you had it, and then you, zoomed, uh, you muted yourself again, so you'll need to unmute one more. There you okay, go. Now. Am I okay now? You're good. All right. Sorry. Um, I'm wondering how it's your possible it's your 14th year at Iowa uh, already, but I wanted to ask you, what has it been like? Uh, how has Coach Ferentz been different as a as your coach versus your boss? And then touch on the fact that there are four alums on the staff now. That must be a testimony to him that people want to get back to the program. Yeah, it's very interesting you say that. Uh, it kind of hit me the other day when someone asked me, well, how long have you been in Iowa? And I started doing the math. Like, yeah, it's 14 years. That's crazy. Uh, however, you know, it, Coach Ferentz is awesome. And I tell people this a lot, that Coach Ferentz, the day I met him back in November, I think it was November, December 1998, uh, back when I was young, I had curly hair. We sat in a different building. Coach Ferentz didn't have, didn't have gray hair. Uh, but he's, he's very much the same guy, you know, very much the same message. He's very consistent. And, uh, you know, those are things that I think guys that have the guys that come back and I listen to him speak, it all resonates with him, with them, because he's very consistent in those messages the things that he believes in developing people, developing, um, the, you know, uh, working to be your best, preparing to be your best. Those are the things that are consistent from back in 1998 until now. And the guys you mentioned are the four former players on the staff. I think that's a tribute not only to this to this state, this program, but also Coach Ferentz. And um, you know, this is this is a home for all of us. This is a place we feel strongly and believe in. You know, myself included. And it's a lot of fun when you get to work with a teammate like Liddell Betts, who I played was on campus four years with, and Coach Bell one year, and then Brian I missed by a year, but certainly you know knew him uh, as a as a young man as a child. But uh, it's it's a lot of fun working with these guys, and you know, it's just fun every day coming to work, telling a couple old stories every once in a while and reminding kids what it used to be like uh, and uh, just going to work every day. The next question, Coach, is from Tyler Devine. LeVar, I don't know exactly how you would go about knowing this, but I would have to imagine that Torrey Taylor is the first player to be named first team All Big Ten in his first season ever playing football. Uh, and what, you know, what does that say just about, about him? Yeah, that's a really good statistic. Uh, I'm sure Tyler Kluver or someone will look that up uh, for us and figure that out if he's the first ever. But uh, I think it says a lot about him. You know, Tory's made incredible sacrifices, incredible personal sacrifices to be here. I'm sure he shared some of them, but just a little bit. You know, he quarantined for three weeks over in Australia, left his family, 
kind of unknown when the season was, was going to start, left his family, quarantined for three weeks in an, in an Australian hotel before he could come across, uh, across the ocean to America, gets to America, has to quarantine for two more weeks in a hotel in Iowa City before he can even meet his teammates. Uh, that says a lot about him and a lot about uh, the sacrifice he's gone through and his family have gone through to be in the position just to come out on the field. And I, I still remember he and I were laughing uh, last week about the first time he saw an American football field. We walk out and see him. And he's just looking around and, and trying to look at the yard marks, the, the, the hashes, you know, trying to figure it all out because it doesn't quite equate to, uh, to an Australian football field. But just seeing him work that first time, the wonder in his eyes and, and just uh, – you know, the excitement in his eyes. And then he rips off the first ball. He goes and hits an end over end punt that bounces out of the, out of bounds at, at the two yard line. Then he hits another one and bounces out at the one yard line. Then he hits one at the five, which he considered a miss hit and it bounces up and settles down at the one yard line. And uh, Marty Hopkins, who's, who's uh, no longer on our staff, but it was with me. We were out there just looking at each other and Tori's like, coach, is this good? Is this what you want? And <laughs> we just looked at each other and just started laughing. But uh you know, I think, like I said, I think it speaks volumes to him and, and, and also his teammates. You know, they, he's brought a, a different energy here and guys love playing with Tori and, and, love, uh, and love trying to cover for him too. So it's been a lot of fun. The next question, Coach, is from Leah Van. Hi, Coach. I'm Leah. I'm new to the meet. <laughs> nice to meet you. Um, yeah, so I was going to ask about Caleb Shudak. I know you uh, spoke a little bit about him, but it seems like he's kind of been – waiting patiently for his turn to take on the starting kicker position. And I just wanted to know what your conversation with him was like when he was probably debating on whether or not to use that extra year of eligibility to come back. And what does it say about his character that he's stuck around for so long and to finally take on this position? First off, when you say the word character, I think of Caleb Shudak and a guy that, uh, you know, like I said, has worked very hard. He's bided, he's bided his time and it's his time to go. It's his opportunity now. And, you know, kind of uh, the conversations he and I had without getting too personal, uh, you know, I, I told him I would cry literal tears if he left because that's how much I feel about Caleb and how much I feel strongly about him as a person and a, and a member of this team. And, uh, you know, it, it was unfortunate at the time he just wasn't getting the opportunity. Uh, he's going to have all the opportunities now uh, that are out there in front of him. And, you know, I don't know what is how difficult it was a decision for him. It was easy for us to we want to keep Caleb here as, as long as we can. You know, if it's another year, we'll take him another year if he wants to be here. But he's just a great, great teammate, great team member, and uh, expecting to be a huge contributor to our football team this year. The next question, Coach, is from Tom Kaker. Hey, LeVar. Hope you're doing well. Um, kind of a two, twofold question. One, um, Terry Roberts has really embraced that role on special teams. There are other guys that are emerging in kind of that similar role. And also, which one of the Kluber brothers is more athletic? I feel like this is I feel like this is uh, stacked against me right now with the Kluber brothers. But uh, talk about Terry Roberts very quickly. I mean, some of the things I've seen in Terry, the growth and maturity I've seen in him over the last six months, it's it's out of this out of this world. And you know, the other day he's out there coaching, give him a break on on some reps, and he's out there coaching, and he looks and sounds like a football coach, like talking to the younger guys, some of the freshmen, uh, and you know, some of the things we're doing as a, as a gunner. It was just awesome to see him, and he's just taking a huge uh, jump. Uh, maturity wise and really looking forward to seeing him continue to grow some of the other guys that are in that in that mix right some guys that are that are, I would call core special teams players that have that have really stepped up a, a young man named Kyler Fisher out of Southeast Valley you know he, he really kind of came in the middle of the year last year and really did a good job and we added some more roles uh, for him he's done a great job Mike Tim um, who's a, a linebacker for us again done a really good job from bringing energy and leadership you know, some of the mainstays that have, that have been out there with uh, Monty Pottebaum and uh, Turner Palisard, right, those are just a couple guys to think about. And some guys that maybe we don't always see as, as special teams players. And, and Riley Moss, when you go back and you watch the tape, you watch the cut-up, he was phenomenal as a corner. Uh, in punt return. I think that's largely has a lot to do with the success that Charlie Jones had as a punt returner. Um, you know, some of, those are some of the names kind of right off the bat. Some young guys – Maybe some guys that uh, that are really taking a jump here this spring. Dallas Craddock, I think, is he's, I see a different look in his eye, a different uh, approach from him. I think he's really stepped up. Henry Marquez uh, is another guy I see in that that kind of same mindset. But really happy with the way the guys are working. We have a it's kind of strange that 
we, there's a lot of guys that have been here, uh, but you know, we did a, a poll, coach did a poll after the first spring practice. How many of you have been here for the, the spring practice the first time today? And it's almost 75% of the team. And so there's a big group of guys we just didn't really know about because of you know, they were freshmen or they missed spring football or they missed, uh, you know, didn't necessarily contribute on the field last year. But there's, I feel really good about the, the trajectory of this group and this team. Coach, we'll take two more questions. The next one from Scott Docterman. Hey, LeVar, how's it going? I'm great, Scott. How are you? I'm good. I, I know I'm the warm-up act here, so I'll get to my Scott, I, got, I got one question for you. Okay. How was that steak you made last night? That thing looked amazing. <laughs> it was fantastic. Yeah. Top of Iowa sirloin with uh, an amber ale. You can't beat it, even if it's 48 degrees. <laughs> I, I want to ask you about Liddell Betts. You played with him. I'm sure you played against him in the NFL or tried, you know, tried to tackle him a few times. What was it like for him as a player 20 years ago? Uh, what was he like as a running back? And then conversely, how is he going to be as a, as a coach? And what have you seen from him just in a few weeks now on campus? You used a very key word there where you said, try to tackle the Dell Betts. I think that's what most people uh, think of when they talk about the Dell Betts. Most people try to tackle the Dell as a, as a teammate. And he was an awesome teammate, right? Really good running back. Great guy off the field, just a, a really good teammate, and very excited that he's gotten into coaching. Uh, I think I think people I think we need to see guys like Liddell Betts in coaching. Um, you know, it's funny he and I had a long conversation back in January when he was trying to get into coaching and whatnot, and I just felt a different uh, air, a different sense about him. Like he was ready, he will, he he's ready for this role, and I'm really excited for him. Um, you know, after we hired him, I told the the running backs that. They have no idea what's in store for them. They're getting one of the, the best guys to coach them, one of the best people that's ever played the position here at this university. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're in for a treat with Liddell. And he's a demanding coach. And just watching him, you know, the last few weeks, demanding coach. But he coaches hard and, and, and loves him up and really excited about him. He has a wealth of knowledge from, from playing and, and, uh, and knowing systems. He's been a high school coach, you know, so he knows that aspect, that element of relating to players. And, uh, and trying to develop players. And that's what we need. And that's what we're excited about with Liddell. Coach, the final question this afternoon is from Tyler Kluver. Yes. Hey, Coach. You look What's fantastic. Up, How you doing? I'm, I'm doing well. Uh, you're clearly hitting the weight room recently. Um, I think Marshall Kane is somewhere probably uh, has something to say about that most athletic kicker spot ever. Um, and I'm glad you didn't answer the question about me and my brother, because I know you don't want to disrespect him like that. So that's, no, that's I, totally I, I, I completely dodged that question too. I didn't even realize it. Yeah, no, it, it's, it's hard to put up numbers that, uh, topped what I did. I understand. Um, in all seriousness, uh, with the dichotomy of how long spring practices are and how soft specialists are. Um, how do you facilitate a pitch count? Because as you know, from personal experience, I know you can't just snap, kick, punt all day long. So how do you, how do you provide value there as a coach? Yeah, it, I'm, I'm, I'd be really interested for you to come back to practice and see how, how it is now, you know, as a former specialist. Uh, one of the things you talk about pitch count, right? Our kickers and punters are on a pitch count every day. And there's a progression we have that we use uh, for them to work, you know, throughout spring ball into the summer and then into the fall camp to make sure that we're not blowing out their legs. And uh, I think too, that one of the misnomers about specialists is well, all they do is kick and then they just sit around all, all day. Furthest thing from the truth. I mean, practice if it's scheduled for two hours, they are working for two, for two hours. It may not be, you know, swinging their leg for two hours, but there's mental aspects of marking your steps as a kicker. There's, as a punter, you're working on the jugs machine, perfecting your, your catch, your mold and your drop. You're working on your lines constantly without swinging your leg. Uh, you know, snappers are, are working on fine tuning their finish. And, you know, there's a, there's a whole bunch that goes into that. And then there's also a portion of practice where once the team portion hits, or where the rest of the team is, is into the team situations, first down, move the ball, third down, right? We're working, uh, we're, if we're going to move the ball, it's, we're talking about first, second, third down, we're playing the situation, especially so. So I'll, I'll tag, all right, hey, I want this, this snapper, this, this punter, this kicker, you guys are live for this period. And we may not be on the field kicking or punting, but we're going through your process, right? Your warm-up process, your warm-up routine on the sideline. Uh, so they're mentally ready when they get that opportunity. Um, also, if we're not involved at all in it, like let's say it's third and two, like everyone loves third and two, it's short yardage, it's going to be some big hits or, uh, 
or something like that. We're, we're being the best teammates we can be. And we try to connect with everyone. We pick a side of the field defense, all right? We're here, connect with your teammates. You know, talk to your teammates, get the, get the, take the pulse of the team. Okay. Then we'll switch sides, go to the offense, do the same thing. Just trying to connect and be, that's how I see special teams. That's how I see specialists being great teammates, being great connectors. And I think we've got a good group doing that. Coach LaVar Woods, we always appreciate the special teams insight and we thank you for your time this afternoon. Hey, thank you guys very much. And like I said, I really appreciate the opportunity. Really appreciate being here in spring football. Again, it's, it, I think it's just a different element in spring football. And, you know, uh, I was coached by Norm Parker years ago, a long time ago, which is crazy to think about how long. But one of the things he, he always stuck with us was that he was a teacher and, uh, and he viewed coaching like teaching. And I think that's what we all are here at Iowa and just trying to help develop young men and help push them forward on the football field in life. And can't be, can't be uh, more excited to do that than and, and relish in this opportunity. So just happy to be here. Thanks so much, Coach. All right. Thank you, guys. Be well. Thank you, everyone, for jumping on. Uh, we'll be back in business next Tuesday and Wednesday. Until then, be safe, and thanks for your coverage.